the market hasn't come back the way people had expected it to. People that I talk to always suggest that um, you know, the U.S. market is the best place to invest. You got good credit markets, more constructive economic growth. But you know, I think it's been difficult because the volatility in the markets has led people to have price expectations that are high. Uh, when you go into a process, and the volatility brings down those expectations. So. The flow has come back. It's come back to maybe 2004 or 2005 levels, but uh, not nearly the level that I would have expected, you know, given the pent-up demand and M&A that I think exists out there. Well, you, you can only do all the recaps once and maybe twice, but you, <laughs> I think the entire balance sheets of our industry uh, basically have probably been done twice uh, in the past uh, 18 months. Uh, I know that we've recapitalized every, almost every company we own. We own uh, probably over $50 billion of debt in companies. Um, and just as rates get lower and lower, uh, and you want the patience of that capital structure to be longer and longer, um, you know, we've been exploiting the markets to, to really, you know, reload, if you will, on both the strengths of our balance sheets, but also the cost of capital. Um, I think it's going to stop uh, because a lot of the deals that have gotten done in the last 24 months frankly been done at pretty high leverage levels because um, if you look at the market three years ago the levels were four or five times and now they're six or seven so you could relever a company you bought a couple of years ago up another couple of ticks and not even improve the company uh, but now a lot of these assets are already being levered seven times and so there isn't that opportunity unless you can generate a lot of cash flow it's reaching those levels but what's interesting I think is two, two things one is um, the cost of that leverage is a lot less than it was in 2000, 2007. You have to realize that rates have come down since 2007. Um, now, I think that will reverse, and anybody bought a company uh, with leverage, as, if that's the only reason that you were able to pay the price, I think you're going to worry about the credit markets when you exit in three or four years. Uh, but actually, the coverage ratios for a lot of these companies have been pretty strong uh, because the rates are so low. If you're talking about the TMT space and the related, if you will, um, uh, irrational exuberance, if you will, like, like we saw in 1999, um, you know, those kind of sectors are very overvalued. Uh, but we are more value buyers. Um, and so when we're looking at companies like we bought BMC Software, um, it had a high growth business inside a business that also had a legacy company. So we were able to buy it for six and a half times. So because of the complexity and because of the nature of the deal, we've been able to find value uh, away from just the hot sectors. Um, a lot of people have bought software companies in the last 24 months at 15 times. Uh, and why did they do that? Well, because they, they can leverage them very high uh, and they're very stable. And so while I think um, it would be very difficult for me to see them generating a great return, it's also hard to lose your money. We've been staying away from that because we don't think that generates as much upside uh, as some of these value-oriented technology deals. Well, I think it's always been there. I think what's happened is the recognition for the counterparty, the seller or the founder, uh, ha has been much more receptive to, to that pitch. You know, it's oftentimes in the beginning they're wondering, okay, well, how are you going to add value? But we've had so many examples, particularly in Japan, uh, where we've partnered with corporations or we've partnered with management teams, and they see us uh, being able to unlock the value and seeing us bring that vertical expertise. So in the beginning it was all about pitching that idea. Now we can look at reference examples uh, where we've delivered that idea. From my perspective, Asia has uh, still a lot of development to do. Certainly credit markets are still early in their development. Uh, one of our affiliates has just expanded their presence here in uh, Asia. Uh, so we're seeing uh, credit uh, affiliates, credit institutions come into Asia, but it's going to take some time uh, to get that done. Um, buyouts, um, I think, are are interesting in developing markets, but they're not a big percentage of the market. So uh, that's going to take some time uh, to evolve. Uh, but I do think value addition, uh, you know, bringing global advantage, vertical resources, uh, all those things are, are pretty much there today uh, to be exploited.